This episode of Waveguide is made possible by HiFiGo. This is a frequency response, but what is it exactly? Why does it matter? How do I read it? Well, hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and the short answer is that a frequency response is a visualization of the sound signature of a headphone, and it really tells you everything that you need to know about how a headphone sounds. And in this episode of Waveguide, I'm going to give you kind of a layman's understanding of frequency response so that you can find out what it is that you like about sound. You can find the headphones that have those attributes or you can even improve the sound quality of the headphones that you already have. And if you like the idea of helpful content like this, well, a shout out to our sponsor, HiFiGo. HiFiGo is making Waveguide possible. If you want to support them, I've got them linked in the description down below. So back to our chart. This is, again, data that is measured on a scale of 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. And that is basically the range of frequencies that humans can hear. And maybe this word frequency is, is throwing you off a little bit. Basically, every sound in the world, uh, whether it's my voice or the music you're listening to or the sound that comes out of a piano, uh, is a frequency that is played at a certain loudness or an amplitude, all right? And so to measure the frequency response of a headphone, basically what we do is we play a tone at every frequency in that range, we play it at a certain level, and then we measure how loud it is when it comes out of the headphone. So imagine you play a tone at every frequency at a set volume, uh, and then you measure the, the, the sound as it comes out of the headphone, you might end up with something like this, where it's a little bit louder down here, maybe it gets a little bit quieter here, gets a little bit louder up here, and a little bit quieter again. And then now you've got yourself a frequency response of the headphone, the IM, the speaker, etc., that you're trying to measure. Now, you might be tempted to think that, well, shouldn't the line just be flat in an ideal world? And certainly some people think that a flat line is the ideal sound signature, but it gets complicated for a couple of main reasons. Reason number one is that, well, everyone has different sound preferences actually. So it might be that you prefer to have a lot of bass in the sound signature of your headphone. So you might not want the line to be flat up here or down here in the low frequency range. Uh, the other thing that's gonna confound this ideal of a flat Flat, is that, okay, your head interacts with sounds in ways that are different coming out of a headphone versus coming out of the natural world. And because of that, the, the fixtures that we use to measure headphones, they try to simulate a head. And the byproduct of that is that basically something that sounds flat to you is not ever going to measure flat. So you just kind of have to get used to that. You have to accept that. The line if you want a sound that's flat, it's not going to be a flat line. Instead of trying to compare it to a flat line, instead what you really do want to be comparing it to is to a target frequency response, which I guess I'll get to at some point. About once a week, I like to check and see what's new on Hi-Fi Go, and thankfully, they've got a little handy tab for it up here called New Arrivals. You know the audio world, there's always something new, and, well, Hi-Fi Go usually has it. Ooh, Soft Ears Volume S. One of the things I like about Hi-Fi Go, and I would, is that they display the frequency response graphs of squiggling directly on their pages, so it's easy to tell if this IM is gonna be for you. Now, Hi-Fi Go has a couple of large sales events throughout the year where you can find some of the best prices on stuff, but even when things aren't on sale, Hi-Fi Go's prices are competitive with the best. They've got free shipping if your order is at least $50 or more. If your order totals up to 500 bucks, they'll actually upgrade your shipping to free express shipping then, well, those are kind of good reasons to check out HiFiGo now. Go to HiFiGo.com to see what's new, get it for a great price, and, uh, well, thanks to HiFiGo for making waveguide videos like this possible. Let's get back to the show. So now you know what a frequency response graph is, but why does it matter? Well, here's a couple of ways that it's pretty, pretty stinking useful. Uh, one, using frequency response data, you can kind of figure out what it is that you like about the sound of headphones that you've heard. And then you can find other headphones that have those attributes so that if you're buying a new headphone, you're, you're shopping for something new, you're likely to buy something that you like, okay? Um, is it 100% accurate? I would say no, but here's an analogy I've been using lately, okay? Well, let's imagine you're shopping for a new IM. There is a world of IMs out there and you're not really sure exactly where to start. In my mind, frequency response graph is like knowing the zip code, all right? So it's like you find the frequency response graph, again, you know what kind of sound signature you're looking for. And rather than trying all of these thousands of potential IMs, you zero in on a small subset of IMs and you try those ones and you're likely, much more likely to like these because you know what the frequency response graph is. Again, is it 100%? No, but it's certainly better than not having that data. 
And then the other really important use of frequency response data is when it comes to EQing your own headphones. This is how you make your own headphones sound better than they already do. And when you have a map of the frequency response of your headphone, again, the blue line here, and you want to make adjustments to it, having that root data just makes this so much easier versus blindly shifting sliders to try and get the sound that you want. Um, if you're interested in more detail on this, because I don't have time to do a full tutorial on how to EQ, subscribe to the channel. I'm definitely going to be diving into EQ in the future, but just note that frequency response data is super, super helpful. Again, note that there are some limitations to the data, but not having the data is just so much worse. All right. So that's why the data matters, but how do we read it? This is, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated folks, but I promise you it's worth it. So here's our data. Um, in fact, let me punch out here and I mentioned, right, this is the frequency response of the off loop performer 5.2. It is not a flat line and that's because, well, you don't necessarily want a flat line. In fact, you don't want to compare it to a flat line. Instead, you want to compare it to one of these reference targets. For this example, we'll use my super 22 neutral target. And this dotted gray line now is kind of my reference of what neutral sounds like. So you can see anywhere where the blue line, the measured frequency response of this headphone is above my neutral target. You could say that it is louder than neutral. Whereas down here, you might say it's a little bit quieter than neutral. Here you might say it's a little bit more quieter than neutral, but then for the most part, this line kind of lines up with my neutral target. So it sounds mostly neutral. It sounds mostly flat, even though the graph isn't quite flat. Although of course there's some pretty big deviations. So are those deviations a good thing or a bad thing? Well, this is where it definitely gets complicated and it's really going to come up to personal personal opinion, right? Um, so like down here, for example, right? This is uh, the base frequencies. And if you see down here below the graph, I've got these little shortcuts that highlight sub bass, for example, right? This range of frequencies I would describe as sub bass. And this little description down here kind of tells you what do these frequencies contribute to the sound? And what does it sound like if you have an excess of this? And if you read this description, you might, you might read that and think, well, that actually sounds pretty good. That actually sounds like something I want. And again, this is, this is just getting into the, the learning curve that is frequency response. Unfortunately, there's no shortcuts, but if you really are trying to make the best purchase decisions and really figure out how to EQ your headphones optimally, figuring out, like just getting used to reading this kind of data, it's where you want to be. So that's it. That's roughly what a frequency response graph is. That's why it's useful. And kind of roughly how to use it. Uh, if you want to check out the stuff for yourself, it is all available on Squiglink, which I've got linked in the description down below. Go to Squiglink, go to the search box, type in the name of a headphone or an IEM that you're familiar with. Take a look at the frequency response and just start to learn this kind of stuff. Again, take into consideration its limitations, but also don't be afraid to sniff a graph in pursuit of better quality sound. And again, a shout out to Hi-Fi Go for sponsoring, making waveguide content like this possible. Um, if you want to show your support, I've got them linked down below, but otherwise I will catch you on the next super review. Cheers. Join with the force of reviews, we now have the tools to brave the misleading world of audio fools. Uh, hey, this review is super, and so are you. Grab your headphones, sniff a graph, and share your thoughts in this pursuit. Let's get the